Lord, we thank you this day. Most Father, we thank you for Jesus. And uh, Lord, we lift tonight up to you. And Lord, may we uh, learn from your word. May we open our hearts to your word. And may we open your word to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're in Zechariah 2. Zechariah 2, yes. Tonight, and uh, it's the future prosperity of Jerusalem. And again, due to the last week me being in the NLT, that's where I'm staying. So just bear with me. When I look again, I saw a man with a measuring line in his hand. Where are you going, I ask? He replied, I'm going to measure Jerusalem to see how wide and how long it is. The angel who was with me went to meet the second angel who was coming toward him. The other angel said, hurry and say to the young man, Jerusalem will someday be so full of people and livestock and uh, that there won't be enough room for everyone. Many will live outside the city walls. Then I myself will be a protective wall of fire around Jerusalem, says the Lord. And I will be the glory inside the city. The Lord says, come away. Flee from Babylon in the land of the north, for I have scattered you to the four winds. Come away, people of Zion, you who are exiled in Babylon. After a period of glory, the Lord of heaven's army sent to me, sent me against the nations who plundered you. For he said, anyone who harms you harms my most precious possession. I will raise my fist to crush them, and their own slaves will plunder them. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. The Lord says, shout and rejoice, O beautiful Jerusalem, for I am coming to live among you. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord on that day and they too will be my people. I will live among you and you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies sent me to you. The land of Judah will be the Lord's special possession in the Holy Land and he will once again choose Jerusalem to be his own city. Be silent before the Lord, all humanity for he is springing into action from his holy dwelling. Alright. So, here we see uh, Zechariah again having a, another vision. Um, so, here we see when I looked up, I saw a man with a measuring line in his hand. Where are you going? I asked. So, when he's looking up, you know, we had visions. Obviously, we have dreams. I know the last time we were praying as elders, uh, the Lord, you know, when I was praying, the Lord gave me a vision for, like, Pastor Neil is what I call a vision. Um, but, you know, he's actually, you know, visions, he's actually seeing. And you know, we get visions that are blessings from God when we're praying and that kind of stuff. And, uh, I had another one many, many, many years ago. Um, and uh, I shared that with Pastor David. I don't know, maybe 30 days ago or something. And it was the night <laughs> they asked me to serve in children's ministry on Thursday night, which is hardcore. So that was my first night. It was the first night that Pastor David started anointing people on uh, down at the altar. And I had a vision that night, the night before, that um, I knew about his heart issues. And that we, as a body, would like lay hands on them. And I'm not talking, not there's nothing wrong with the hand forward stuff. Well, I'm talking about laying hands, well, laying hands on him. And I thought it was going to be that night. And I was just so upset, man. I mean, and I remember Catherine the Villa, because I knew that that was going to happen. And I remember Catherine, seeing Catherine the Villa. She passed away, but she had some serious stomach issues. And I don't even know if I knew her then. And I remember seeing her just, just walking hunched over. And I got up hard and I prayed for her. And I was like, well, maybe that's what that was about. And then I heard what had happened that night. And Jan came and told me, and I literally cried. And I was just like, ah, I'm supposed to be there. I'd never serve in children's ministry again. That was not <laughs> On a Thursday night. On a Thursday night. 
But anyway, I shared that with him. So, uh, and I tried to get it done, like on the down low, a couple times because you know he hadn't rebuilt that until recently. And uh, when we were at the new building, uh, well, the old building, remember when we went to the old building and visited? I tried to kind of get it done then, and just didn't work out. So that's something that we're going to have to do. So it's on Thursday night, we're going to have to get together and, and as a body and lay hands on him. But anyway, um, so he's. Zachariah is having a vision, and uh, so he looked up and saw a man with a measuring line in his hand. Where are you going, I asked. He replied, simple, it's not rocket science here. He replied, I'm going to measure Jerusalem to see how wide and how long it is. All right, so if we'll go flip over to Revelation 11. We see this again when John was told, then I was given a measuring stick and I was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the number of worshipers. But do not measure the outer courtyard. I mentioned that last week. For it has been turned over to the nations. Now, yeah, I believe that he's not measuring that outer court was turned over to the nations. Because that's going to be like literally probably being controlled by the United Nations. You know, we know it's not for Israel right now. And you know, as we continue to read on, uh, they will trample on the holy city uh, for 42 months. Your Bible might say time, times, a half a time. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will be clothed in burlap and will prophesy during those uh, 1,260 days. But you know, on this one, um, you know, as we'll read down, I'll explain it. You know, see how wide and how long it is. And the angel who was with me went to meet a second angel who was coming toward me. The under, other angel said, hurry and say to the young man, Jerusalem will someday be so full of people and livestock or animals uh, that there won't be enough room for everyone. So here, Zechariah is encouraging everyone. Uh, because, I mean, the city is decimated. They've been trying to rebuild the temple. They've been coming against. And here's Zachariah saying, hey, man, you know, God's giving you word. Don't worry. This place is going to be so full. You know, why is he measuring how wide and how long it is? You know, only 50,000 people. 50,000 of us came back. I mean, what's God talking about? And God's saying, hey, just don't worry. You know, it's going to be so full of people and animals. Um, someday... There won't be enough room for everyone. They're like, okay, wow. And many will live outside the city walls. So there'll be so many people that'll live outside of the city walls. Now, right now, we know that, you know, back in the ancient days, you know, and obviously today, walls are a good thing. And the big cities had walls because that's where the people found their security. And the same way with Jerusalem. But now there's you know, there's people coming against them. There's no walls. You know, they feel insecure. I don't even know if they've got any weapons. Um, and, you know, uh, there's, you know, I just was thinking about modern day and modern times. But, uh, you know, now the Lord uh, says right here in verse 5, it says, Then I myself will be a protective wall of fire around Jerusalem, says the Lord, and I will glory inside the city. Um, so God's saying, hey, you know, y'all don't worry. I know there's no walls right now, but I, myself, am going to build a wall, a wall of fire around it, and I'm going to protect you. Um, and if we'll go to uh, flip over to Kings, 2 Kings 6, 17. That's when I remember this. It's like, don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, Oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elijah was filled with horses and chariots of fire. And, uh, as I was reading this, I remember uh, that verse in, in Kings. And I know 
myself, I have at times, and I don't know if y'all have, like, Lord, let me see. And let me see the supernatural. Let me see the angels. You know, or there's angels who might be demons around too, but let me see them. And every now and again, I'll work, we'll be at the office. Let me see the angels standing up there. And uh, that was uh, years ago, I gave Pastor David a Christmas present I've got. This uh, friend, he's a pastor, Pastor Jeremy. And I was trying to think of his last name. Anyway, it's, it's uh, someone took my time. His name's Pastor Jeremy. He's an incredible artist and uh, is the Lord. Um, I helped, well, we helped him out business wise on something, and he says, Hey, man, I've got this extra drawing here, and um, it's East Carolina. I mean, it's God, man. I, my dad graduated from East Carolina. And he did the big painting, I guess, inside of the field house or whatever. And uh, it's got like a pirate. And he's kind of like a ghost. He's running through with the football players. And, and it was cool. And I said, yeah, my dad graduated from ACU. We'd love to have that. I mean, and so that was the Lord just, we blessed him. The Lord blessed my dad. Um, but anyway, I said, hey, I want you to, to commission you for a drawing. He said, all right. So, um, and when the pastor David Pace posted it on Facebook, and people literally thought it was real. And what it is is it's Pastor David giving the Ronnie blessing and got jeans on. And we're in the back. All of us are in the back. A lot of us have got our hands raised. And then there's a big Jesus uh, right to the left of him. And you can see the holes in his hand. And he's got a beard. And he's just, I mean, it's like five times or maybe 10 times the size of Pastor David. And, and it looks so real. And you, you can kind of see the, uh, the scrim and the, the uh, trusses and everything. It's kind of like translucent. It, it's crazy. But, um, you know, I always, a lot of times, I'm like, just let me see. You know, but I know that, uh, and I was reminded, you know, in John 2029, 20, blessed are the ones that have not seen but believe. That's what he was talking to Thomas. Um, but, you know, walls are, you know, I think today about walls and, you know, no walls. This was a no border, no walls, no USA at all, right? So, you know, today we know that the walls still are important. And, yeah, we are supposed to pray for God's supernatural hand and protection. But, you know, we also, you know, lock our doors at night. You know, God will protect us, but... He's also given us the ability and, and uh, ways to protect ourselves, praise God. Um, but here, um, and, and in Nehemiah, we see the same thing. All right, so in Nehemiah, God does what? He tells him to rebuild the walls. You know, now it's time to rebuild the walls. And what is Nehemiah and his guys doing? You got a trial in one hand and a sword in the other. So that's a, a, another good example. You know, God says, hey, I'm going to protect you over the wall of fire. But I want you to go ahead and rebuild this wall. And they were prepared for whatever was to come. Okay, so. Go down to verse 6. So the Lord says, come away. Flee from Babylon in the land of the north, for I have scattered you to the four winds. All right, so now we're being uh, now we're being transported back to what's coming. So you know you could look at this and say, okay, well he's talking about the captives in Babylon or the people in Babylon now that didn't come back. You know, the fifty thousand came back, but you know they've not been scattered. You know they. The Babylonians captured them. They went to Babylon. 50,000 of them came back. The rest of them were still there. What he's talking about is um, when the Romans in 70 AD destroyed the temple and scattered the Jewish people all over the world, all over the nations. So he's talking about, you know, the Lord says, Come away, flee from Babylon in the land of the north. For I have scattered you to the four winds. Come away, people of Zion, you who are exiled in Babylon. 
After a period of glory, the Lord of heaven's armies sent me against the nations who have plundered you. For he said, anyone who harms you harms my most precious possession. Uh, Israel is the apple of God's eye. I will raise my fist to crush them and their own slaves to plunder them. And we know, like today, anybody that uh, blesses Israel will be blessed. And you can look at us today. You know, we had, well, you can just take, for example, we had uh, eight years of Clinton. Um, and then right after that, we had 9-11. Uh, then we had eight years of the last administration. The economy was just a total nightmare. And then all of a sudden, what do we do? We recognize Jerusalem as a capital. Now we have a 3.6% uh, job, uh, job rate or um, unemployment rate and there's still a billion jobs actually I would say that would be incorrect because there's a billion jobs out there that nobody can fill them um, you know record uh, money coming into the treasury I mean we're the jobs coming back and we just keep on blessing Israel keep on blessing Israel and you know last week I said the fifth was that which is coming past but the state department now has said regardless of the political situation in Israel June the 25th is the day that they're going to introduce the peace plan. Period. So I don't know whether they hold that or not, I don't know, but, you know, because they kept moving target, moving target for well over a year now, but now it's like June 25th, that's it, we're doing it. End of story. So, you know, that, then we'll have to see, hopefully, prayerfully, it's a one-state solution. And I actually saw an article where the Palestinians some of them are accepting that it might be a one-state solution. And that's never before happened. So, you know, we talked about, you know, um, I didn't realize, like, in the first, it was the first six months of the Trump in February, starting in February, they had 20 meetings, whereas the first three months, it was a crazy number that they had been meeting with a boss, that Jerry Kushner and Trump's, uh, attorney, I can't remember his name, um, and, and he's been working through these negotiations, and not too long ago, it might have been a week or two ago, I can't remember, that uh, a boss says, um, you need to fire Kushner, but you need to fire the negotiators, and that was Trump's attorney for whatever reason, and I don't know where that stood or stands, but anyway, um, hopefully the 25th will they'll announce that peace plan and then we'll get this thing kicked off and see what happens. Um, so, you know, the Jews were scattered and they did not have a land to call their own, you know, uh, until 1948, so some 1900 years. Um, and, you know, it says, uh, you know, Jerusalem will be treaded uh, on by the Gentiles. And really the Temple Mount is still treaded on. Uh, by the Muslim and Gentiles. Um, let's go to Zechariah 14 2. It says, I will gather all of the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken, the house is looted, and the women is raped. Half the population will be taken into captivity, and the rest will be left among the ruins of the city. Now, these are this is when God is going to uh, most of the world is going to come against Israel at an appointed time in the Book of Revelation. Harms my most precious possession, I will raise my fist to crush them and their own slaves to plunder them. Then you will know the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. So, as we see here in uh, verse 10, the Lord says, Shout and rejoice, O beautiful Jerusalem, for I am coming. Now we're talking about the 
uh, millennial reign. And there's some awesome things uh, in the millennial reign here. Um, the Lord says, Shout and rejoice, O beautiful Jerusalem, for I am coming to live among you. Now, when he's talking about coming to live among us, that is the millennial reign. That's the new Jerusalem. So politically, the thousand year reign, Jesus is going to be governing. Absolutely. So Jesus is the king. Um, in Psalms 2, 6 through 9, we see that he rules from Mount Zion. Isaiah 24, 23 is the city of Jerusalem. Jer Jeremiah 23, 5, he will reign in justice and righteousness over the entire earth. But don't put your trust in man, put your trust in the Lord. Revelation 19.15 He'll rule with a rod of iron and will always be in righteousness and justice. We'll have a glorified body then. So our glorified body will be able for us to fulfill our ministry. We'll be uncorrupted in the millennial reign. In Revelation 2.26-27 we're actually going to have power over the nations. In Revelation 3, 21, it says we'll sit on the throne with him, anyone who overcomes. Um, also, there'll be some of us uh, that will judge over the 12 tribes of Israel. Because we've got, you know, 144, God will put right before uh, that seventh seal is open. You know, they're like, wait, wait, we've got to put the mark on the forehead of the 40, 144,000. And the 144,000 make it through. Uh, the tribulation period and they will be in the living in the millennial reign um, they will have children and you know uh, so we will be we will have jobs some of us will be governing over them over the nations that are going to be set up and there will be um, you know I forget how many generations nine or ten generations I can't remember that uh, will grow up totally different than we, than we have been. Um, and they'll have a choice. They'll have free will. So, you know, they'll have that ability to accept God or not. And it says uh, that after, you know, the, devil, the enemy's chained up, he's going to be let loose and it doesn't give us a time period. Um, and then he's cast into hell forever and then we set up the new kingdom. That's forever and ever. Um, but uh, uh, we all look forward to that. Socially, um, we'll have world peace, for the true world peace. Uh, Isaiah 35, 1 through 10 says, we'll have healing and joy to all the people. Isaiah 54, 13 says, great peace will flood this earth. Isaiah 2 through 4 uh, says the nations will learn war no more. Physically, and the animal, the creation, creation will be uh, delivered from the curse. There'll be harmony between animals and people and creation will be restored. Romans 8, uh, 9, 21. Uh, it's creation will be delivered. Uh, Isaiah 11, 6 through 9 says, we all know this from the line all the way down in the land. Uh, Isaiah 35, 1 through 2. It's the desert will blossom like a rose. And Isaiah 51 3 through 6, the earth will be restored back to the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. So the Lord says, Shout and rejoice, O beautiful Jerusalem, for I am coming to live among you. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord on that day, and they too will be my people. I will live among you. And you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies sent me to you. The land 
and Judah will be the Lord's special possession in the Holy Land. And he will once again choose Jerusalem to be his own city. And then it says, Besada before the Lord. So be silent before the Lord, all humanity, for he is springing into action from his holy dwelling. So be in reverence, be in awe. And look out uh, when God uh, is to be silent for the Lord, all humanity, for he is springing into action from his holy dwelling. So we're just supposed to just be in awe of what's fixing to happen in this uh, new millennial reign. When all things are made right and all things are made new. So, and as I was reading through uh, Jeremiah and Daniel, um, yeah, there was just some, again, you know, the, the, the prophecy of the end times just fascinates me. And I'm still learning. I'm still, as I was flipping through this thing and reading through 11 and 12, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be studying on Zachariah. Just, you know, then I got in Jeremiah and I was reading that and I'm like, oh man, oh wow, wow. You know? So I'm really excited that we're in uh, the book of Zechariah. I get to finish it up with chapter 14, um, uh, which is the Lord will rule the earth. And uh, uh, again, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to this peace plan. And like I said last week, I mean, we're potentially we're that close. I mean, we're that close to. Uh, like I said, if you're a preacher or that close to going home, hey, I praise God, I hope it is it. And if you're anything mid-trip, post-trip, pre-wrath, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, uh, you know, I know that um, in uh, Daniel, it talks about, uh, I want to say it was 11, um, might be there's a, a verse. Can they come to an agreement to where uh, 
uh, you know, Trump wants to make Palestine the next Dubai. You know, put oil refineries and make them rich. And then can they get that shared temple mount? And again, the Muslim countries have agreed to that. So you know, that's how close we are. So you know, I'm excited. I don't know about y'all. Uh, but anyway, all right, well, let's pray and then we'll gather together. And there's many, 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 many people that we need to pray for. And I was thinking about that today. I just kept on and thought, oh, man, pray for him. Let's pray. Our Father, we come in Jesus' name. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you gave us uh, a path um, or a, a book, your word, uh, that tells us what's uh, going on. What we need to do and tells us the end times. Uh, you, you had it written down to tell us, to warn us, um, just like your prophets, to, to tell us to repent, to turn. And uh, Lord, uh, I just pray over these men in here and I pray that, um, Lord, you continue to reveal your word to us uh, through these prophets. And uh, Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray uh, for this uh, agreement coming up. And uh, we pray for your return. And uh, I'd say right now, most of us are ready. Uh, let's do this. And uh, so, Lord, we just uh, thank you and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.